live from the spring game. We're a bit high above the field at the moment. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. Uh, so far, 14 to 3, red over white. Anything jump out at you so far, Mason? Yeah, I would say, and it's not really on the positive side, just the inconsistency in the game today. Uh, Maryland's offense started off moving with Jacob Copeland and Leah connecting early, but ever since then, there's been a little bit of lack of just rhythm in this game. I know they're rotating a lot of guys through. All the walk-ons are getting an opportunity to play today, but at the same point, you would like to see that consistency, and there's some guys missing that hurt that. Jayshon Jones, Dante Demas, Rakim Jarrett aren't playing. Mason Lunsford on the offensive line is also not playing today. On the defensive side, uh, Kite is not playing. Some other guys have had very, very limited action, but some of the guys that I really wanted to see today, like Antoine Littleton, Jayshon Barham, have been very, very limited in the amount of time they've been spending on the field. And overall, though, you know, when you put together a spring, it's about the whole full body of work. This is supposed to be the celebration of that, so it's good to see some other guys getting in. I'm a little surprised that Leah doesn't look as sharp as I thought he would. Colby McDonald's gotten a lot of run as the tailback for the white team, which is the second offense. Uh, really, Maryland has not tried to stretch the field. It's not shown anything but being vanilla. And for being a center of excellence for the wide receivers, uh, the kid they brought in from Florida looks excellent. Now, what's his story? Yeah, just a guy that, that wasn't happy after the Dan Mullen departure and a guy that wanted to have a different opportunity. We talked a lot about it on the Shell and Tell segment that I was on this morning. Which um, is Copeland. Yeah, Jacob Copeland, a, a guy that, you know, just really liked and, what Maryland had going. And for as we're doing this, the game picks up again, so we'll give you some footage of that. So Copeland comes in. He certainly looks well-built for the position. Looks like a man playing wide receiver. Yeah, and a true SEC guy was top-tier talent at Florida, a guy that Locks uh, recruited uh, at, I believe, both Florida and Alabama. But, uh, you know, you, you get those guys into a program like Maryland. It's a similar level of football, similar level of competition that we'll see throughout the year for Jacob Copeland. And once Demas and Jones are back on the field, guys like Marcus Fleming get back. I hate, hate to ball. interrupt. Here's a fourth down play for the white team. Beautiful catch. Tarheed still at wide receiver. You know, he is the all-time leader in the receiving yards of the great state of New Jersey. And they say he did not catch that, so there's a turnover on downs. Uh, so that should tell you that it's hitting fun time here in the fourth quarter. Although I think on video review, if he takes this to the ground, that's a catch. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Transfers seem to have robbed Maryland of a good deal of the depth that they had built up. And the roster looks a little thin. What's your take on that? Yeah, my take on it is that you know, they did lose a lot of depth piece. I think Andre Porter, one of the most recent departures to the portal actually announced today, is, is just another example of that guy that, that came in with that class that was packed full of defensive linemen, which also limited Maryland's ability to recruit defensive linemen this last cycle. Uh, just guys that can step in for you if somebody goes down, that are early developmental guys that you need to put together all the way before you really get that end result, that investment that you make in your players when you take developmental guys. When those guys hit the road, it becomes really hard for you to rebound because you gave them a spot on your team, you're expecting them to contribute throughout their career, and they're not doing that for you because they decided to go elsewhere. That's a really tough one. When it relates to NIL, I just think NIL is destroying college sports right now. Uh, I think that is really the phrase that I would use at this point. Schools like USC, Miami, that are private institutions that have uh, basically unlimited amount of booster dollars are going to dominate the game because they'll pick up the phone, they'll tamper, they'll use the same back channels that they use in high school recruiting to gain that upper hand in, in, in post-high school recruiting. Second phase, recruiting never stops at this point. They are, you're being recruited nonstop. And uh, what happened in Miami basketball over the past few days is illustrative of that. They had a, one of their stars, had an NIL for a large amount of money. They go out and pick up another recruit, but guarantee him a 
an NIL for more, and now the first player is well, upset. That, that's been cleared up as of, as of today. Actually, as of just right now, a statement was released for, by the player that received the second, the smaller deal, that actually said that he didn't do anything to open a wallet. He didn't do anything to that. There's uh, statements that were supposedly made by him were false. And, yeah, his yeah, Twitter and, was hacked. But, but all uh, it's saying is, you know, there still is a business of aspect of it, and as you know, anybody that that's worked in the professional world knows, if somebody's making eight hundred thousand, someone's making six hundred thousand in a Porsche, um, and you say that's not enough, a lot of people just say they get out. You know, that, that still stands true. The right. NIL companies are run by real legitimate business people. Yeah, but the NIL part is they they want their team to win, and I would say that if we had extra millions, a hundred million extra dollars in the bank, we'd want Maryland to win. Uh, and we might get involved in the game at that level. And speaking of games, action's back on here in College Park. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Martha Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. And with 8, 8.45 to go, it's still 14 to 3, red over white. So the spring game didn't have as much sparkle, and I'm sure Locks will say in the post game they kept this vanilla, wanted to play everybody, and this doesn't make that much difference. It's can you actually win your at least six, if not seven, games of this upcoming season? With the talent that you see on the field, for the guys that do play, I see a definite increase in size. And we've said this sort of year over year, that it now looks like Maryland's got Big Ten power. But when you actually have a fullback, a man-sized fullback, you have Wolf at tight end, you have Dupree at tight end, you've got this class of wide receivers that does seem to be, even with the injuries, still formidable. Um, you can squeeze, I'm sure you can see six or seven wins as you look down, yeah, down and, the top. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at right now is the schedule. And I think there's a game that has some concern for folks, which is that SMU game. What, what I will say after seeing this team today, seeing the size of the defense, is I'm not, unless they're all involved in my Freshman at their 